Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online worship this morning. We are delighted to have you here. If you are new to the online community, we'd love to hear from you. Please email us at the email address is office at clchr.org. Or you can find out more information on Facebook or on our website. But we'd love to connect you with our small group and with others in our community. So please let us hear from you. If you're a longtime listener now of our online community, we still would like to hear from you. Uh, you can contact me or any of the staff members and let us know how you're doing. And if there's ways that we can connect you with others and reach out to you, we'd like to know that as well. I have a couple of announcements for you today. The first is that we have our Emmaus service this evening, and that's the communion at home service, and it's on Zoom. You will receive uh, a link or already have received, received the link for that. So we invite you to join us. In that, we're going to have the blessings of the quilts. Uh, usually we've had that in the sanctuary, and the sanctuary is filled with quilts on the back of all the pews. But tonight, uh, we will be able to see those who have quilts in their homes. We will bless them, and then they will be packed up and sent off to Lutheran World Relief and other places where people need comfort and where they need the warmth of a blanket that was handmade by our mission quilters. The other way to serve this week is through our food drive. It's on Tuesday and Wednesday at the church from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. We've changed the hours to fit around the preschool drop-off schedule. And so you're welcome to bring your food items there. Uh, they are, you, they can be dropped off also on Sunday mornings during our worship service that's in the parking lot. This week's food is going to Field Elementary. And I want you to know that both of the food banks that we serve, Field Elementary and Sharing with Sheridan, they're connected. Uh, we learned that many of the field families are going to Sharing with Sheridan throughout the summer to pick up their food. So we're delighted to have been able to serve this field throughout this time. So again, that's this Tuesday and Wednesday. They can use your help. And if you're able to help, that would be great. We begin this service now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. Well, the gospel for this Sunday, according to Matthew, the 18th chapter, starting at the 15th verse. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. 
If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If that member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. For truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything that you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This for us today in our presence is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, beloved children of God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Uh, there's a website on the internet uh, called PassiveAggressiveNotes.com. PassiveAggressiveNotes.com. And that is a uh, simply a one giant archive of passive-aggressive notes that have been collected and provided for others to find amusement at. Uh, passive-aggressive notes uh, that had been left one, from one roommate to another, uh, from one neighbor to another, uh, a co-worker to another, each one a passive-aggressive jab about something that had happened that someone else didn't like. Uh, there was the note that was left uh, on the office refrigerator, Jerry, I know that you've been stealing my lunch. Or the message that was taped to the neighbor's door. I heard you playing loud music at 11.07 p.m. last night. You're keeping everyone in the neighborhood up. Hmm. These little notes are condescending, usually anonymous, and nearly always ineffective. And in fact, they often make things worse. Some make use of a simple sticky post-it note while others involve the use of chalk to create a new parking spot for those who intentionally take up two spaces at the grocery store. I confess, I've done that one before. I've gotten out the chalk. But no matter how they're done, it's all passive aggressive because the note writer won't go and talk to the other party directly. Instead, choosing to leave a message for the other person to later find when the author has safely moved out of the way. In our gospel reading, though, today that I just shared with you, Jesus has some instructions from this Matthew chapter 18 for how we Christians ought to behave. And sadly, it does not include sending passive-aggressive notes. Jesus says, if another member of the church sins against you, go to that person and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. And if you're not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word can be confirmed by witnesses. And if they still don't receive that time as a way of moving the relationship back to being restored, then take them before the entire church. And if the other offender still refuses to listen, let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. It's an escalating series of responses. But look how it begins. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If you have a grievance, if your fellow Christian is gossiping about you or spreading false rumors or cheated or defrauded you or stole your lunch out of the office fridge, Jesus tells you to go and talk to that person directly, sibling to sibling. Address the problem in private, face to face. We do this so that in our going and talking to the person privately, we're not publicly shaming them. I'm preaching to you today from within my office because I've had these kinds of difficult, holy, and life-restoring conversations here in this very room. See, we're not supposed to be in that public arena of trying to make the other person hurt. Instead, we're supposed to be giving them a chance to change their behavior without convening the court of public opinion. Now, Jesus' instructions do involve taking the matter to the whole community if that becomes necessary, but it does not start that way. 
It starts with a private conversation between two people. This also keeps us from launching attacks anonymously, but rather seeking the restoration of the relationship because it's ever so important. It shifts our intent and ability to treat someone like an object of anger and instead remember that they are truly a person of value. No more anonymity or vague, you know, some people think. Mm -mm. Instead, Jesus expects us to be honest. And in our speaking ourselves and our own truth to one another, because the Lord values each and every one of us. That's where, well, a lot of us cringe up on the inside and stack together a layer of bricks upon one another in the walls of our self-defenses because it's painful to hear, Eric, you've wronged me. And it's also often painful to look someone else in the eye and say, you hurt me. Many of us, especially those who would rather not engage in even the most constructive conflict management, Many would rather dance around the issue, avoid talking about it, sigh and roll their eyes, and leave passive-aggressive notes, hoping that the other person will eventually get the hint, somehow. But Jesus is telling us how Christians ought to behave. Even in campaign years. Maybe especially in campaign years. We as Christian disciples should be honest, personable, direct, and remember the value of relationship rather than go hunting for the most tender and sensitive soft targets in the adversary. Being direct, it isn't the same thing as being rude or harsh. A lot of us have even moved past passive and just gone straight for aggressive in our country's society today. But being direct means standing behind what you say without needing to obliterate the playing field. Being direct means standing firm on your principles and on your beliefs, on your truth, owning it, but also listening to the other as well. Being direct means looking the other person in the eye seeing them as Christ does, and working together for the sake of the community. But if that fails, if that fails, then Jesus tells us to involve some other members of the community. Now, this is not about getting together a gang of people who agree with you to bully the other person into submission. No. These others are more like witnesses, arbiters, neutral third parties, other siblings of both people, holding both people accountable. If those witnesses aren't enough to bring about reconciliation, then the whole community gets involved. And if they still won't listen, then Jesus says, let one be such as to you a Gentile and a tax collector. Now, we need to have one thing very clear about that line. In the most extreme case here, after all of the other attempts have failed, Jesus says, let one be to you such as a tax collector or as a Gentile. But who did Christ choose to reach out to? Who did he choose to have company with and be identified among? Serve and welcome into the kingdom of heaven that was at hand. The Gentiles and the tax collectors. They are the people that the church is supposed to be reaching out to. So even in the most extreme case of these escalations, when someone falls away from the community due to their hurt and their anger, there is still always the open possibility for reconciliation, the opportunity for that person to return back into the community when they seek to become healthy again and do that honest work of restoring the relationship. Now, through this whole passage, Jesus is telling us how community ought to be and how we ought to treat each other. As a country, we have fallen far, far short of that standard. 
it's not because of the fact that America is not a Christian theocracy. The official religion of the country does not have to be Christianity for us disciples to live out our lives as we've been instructed by our Lord. In fact, because America is not a theocracy, we should be actually that much more diligent in graciously living out our baptismal callings with compassion and with mercy and service and stewardship for everyone. These instructions from Jesus, they challenge us to be better, to be better as individuals, to be better as a community of faith. They challenge us to resolve our conflicts and disagreements in ways that, yes, are difficult, but ultimately healthier and more Christian. It's difficult because as a society, we are way out of practice. It'd be like me trying to be a starting tight end in the NFL when I haven't even put on football pads since ninth grade. Yet, with Christ, all things are possible. Even the healing of our most burdened relationships. And yes, even the healing of our country and of our world. How? Well, I said earlier that being direct isn't the same as being mean. We don't need to obliterate the playing field. But likewise, loving the other is not the same as placid and fake niceness. Loving one another doesn't mean avoiding conflict. Sometimes loving our neighbor does require us to face disagreements. These are times when it is most crucial to speak the truth with love. Paul begged the early church to live honorably. Integrity rather than backstabbing. Consistent presence rather than anonymity. Truth in cherished relationships rather than gossip and slander. And yes, even doing away with those tasty passive-aggressive notes. We need to strive to behave more this way. Not only because Jesus told us to, though that is good reason in and of itself, but because what Jesus says at the end of today's gospel reading. Remember what he said? Where two or three or more are gathered in my name, I am there among them. When two or three are gathered, Jesus is there. Just think. Imagine for a moment. If every Christian took this promise of Jesus seriously. The implications for how we behave would be tremendous. It's not just about hoping to get our prayers answered. If we remembered that Jesus Christ was, is, truly in the room, how much better would we be at behaving like Christians. Hmm. Not just here with us when we worship. Not just in church meetings and Bible studies. Not just when we go outside to do a community service. Whenever two or three are gathered. When you stand face to face with a person who sinned against you. When you look in the eye of the person with whom you have a disagreement. When your very core trembles and the ache strips away the ability to put words together that daftly expresses the emotions that are bubbling over within. This is one of those truths that is both a blessing and a challenge. Yes, Christ is present with us. Thanks be to God. And yes, Christ is present with us. So we really ought to act like it. As Christians, we are called to a high standard of behavior by our Lord. That has never changed. We are called to behave honorably. To be forthright. To address conflict directly and fairly. And it's not easy. When we try, Christ is present. When we fail, Christ is present. 
when we succeed even just a little, Christ is present. Let's then start out this new week as we get closer and closer to November by inviting the Holy Spirit of God to use us as disciples that we can humbly yet boldly teach and remind the rest of the country. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the work of the church in this community. Strengthen ecumenical partners. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice 
and those yearning for forgiveness. Grant community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, and spirit, especially those we mention to you now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O oh God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor, as well as those who are unable to find work. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equipped them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. Today we especially remember all those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray that prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> words of blessing. May God bless you with discomfort, 
at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your hearts. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and lead you in the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Blessings, everyone. Take care. We miss you.